this story begins in Madagascar. No, not this Madagascar. This Madagascar. Mad in 2013, Madagascar was hit by one of the worst locust invasions it had seen in over a decade. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world, whose already vulnerable populations are often and regularly hit by floods, drought, and famine. Needless to say, they could have used a break. But climate change doesn't give you a break. To give you some background, for a decade I worked as an operations specialist uh, in and with some of the poorest countries in the world, right, uh, such as Haiti, right after they were hit by natural catastrophes with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Since I was little, having grown up in sub-Saharan Africa and having uh, seen the harsh conditions that many populations lived through, I knew I wanted to make an impact, no matter how small. Given my grades in math and science, I was clearly not destined to be a, a doctor or a mathematician or a scientist or, or a banker. So what was left for me? Jumping on opportunities to work with some of the most reputable uh, experts in the world in disaster response, and through which I developed my own skill set, implementing in very hard conditions their wild ideas by providing operational support. So let me tell you about this wild idea that I had. Feeding insects to fish and feed, uh, and uh, f uh, to fish and chickens. Just in case you didn't notice my sarcastic tone, my wild idea is really quite simple. It's giving nature back to nature. While I was in Madagascar, my husband, a Grammy-nominated chemical engineer, came to visit me a couple of times. While I was busy chasing the locusts, he was busy having wild ideas and looking for ways to stop chasing me. He knew my passion for my work and my passion for him, so he started pitching me ideas on... Uh, he started pitching me ideas uh, that would combine both of our personal and professional ambitions and that would also allow us to live and work together. During the same time, in 2013, FAO's report uh, on edible insects as food and feed was released promoting the beneficial use of insects and their potential to alleviate hunger in the world. Given the context, we started uh, researching the beneficial use of insects as a source of uh, protein for both humans and animals, but also as a solution to perhaps humanity's greatest challenges. In 2050, there will be more than 9 billion people on this planet. In Africa alone, population will double. Right now, the demand for uh, animal protein is booming due to developing countries becoming wealthier. This is clearly putting more strain on our ecosystem through land uh, clearing, energy, and water use. Clearly, scaling up our current agricultural system is not the way to go. With this in mind, we decided to create Next Protein, a French-Tunisian agri-tech startup that produces insect-based protein for animal feed. Our mission is to address land and resource scarcity, uh, to feed a rising population with almost no carbon footprint. Wanting to create Wanting to create a, a, an eco-responsible company, we knew that we couldn't take food away from humans and giving, give them to insects. We knew the importance of our choice of insect. We needed to find an insect. We needed to find an insect that had 
that was beneficial, that had high yield, but that also uh, allowed us to participate in alleviating uh, food waste. Today, one-third of global food production ends up in landfills. With our innovative uh, process, we found a way to reintegrate wasted protein through the harvesting and rearing of insect larvae on what's otherwise unconsumed food and reintegrate it into the food chain. We are able to produce as much protein in 100 square meters as uh, with insect farming as 100 hectares with a soybean field. That's 10,000 times less. How do we do that? We harvest our protein every day. Our insect of choice's life cycle is less than a month. And we use vertical farming to minimize space use. Biotech, green tech, all of these fancy words, really, they scared us at first. After all, what did we know about insects? What did we know about industrializing insect rearing? Uh, about green technology. We were starting from scratch in my parents' garage, and they were delighted, by the way. After much trial and error, we realized, and, and getting more familiar with uh, the sector that we were in, we were certain that we were on the right path and have since achieved many milestones. The purpose of the story is really quite simple. Before achieving Elon Musk's wild idea to go and invade Mars, we still have this planet to take care of. With smart technology and whilst using, um, whilst using the resources that the Earth has for us, we're able to tackle climate change and food insecurity. Technology of today cannot be that of yesterday. The stakes are higher and they're different. We often think that technology is inaccessible to us, but more often than not, it's much more down to earth than one would think. While I was in Madagascar, observing the locusts and their amazing capacity to multiply at such a, a fast rate, it inspired us to use technology that's already available in nature and create an innovative, environmentally friendly industry from it. This is the basis of biomimicry, combining technology and nature. This is how we get Michael Phelps's swimsuit inspired by sharks, by shark skin, how we get wind turbines inspired by uh, whale fins, and how we get airplane wings inspired by birds. For example, photovoltaic energy, wind energy, biomass conversion, all of these wild ideas, they have one thing in common. They sustainably use natural resources without polluting the planet to create clean energy. Today, we're in Tunisia on the beautiful continent that is Africa, land of resources and opportunity. And today we have an opportunity to improve our energy sufficiency by investing in this kind of technology. As entrepreneurs who wanted to tackle agri-tech and green tech and biotech and be successful, we had to believe in our wild idea in our innovation, in order to convince scientists and engineers and, and, and investors to adhere to our project and support us in the development of our technology. Being in this field is really not about being a hero. It's just being a responsible global citizen that understands the urgency to change the way agriculture and food production are currently being done. Tackling climate change is not reserved for NGOs or for governments. Simple citizens like you and me, who, who might not initially be technology savvy, but who are willing to take risks, who are willing to surround themselves with the right people, 
can create business models that protect our environment and contribute to making this a better world for our future. Thank you.